just uh, excited about the opportunity, obviously playing um, a top 15 team in the country. Uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us and our group. We're excited, though, about that and, um, you know, look forward to it. Obviously, it's on uh, prime time on a big channel. And, uh, you know, we've got a couple of, of big days coming up in prep. Um, you know, so much respect and admiration, obviously, for for Coach Blair and his staff and, and their program. And, and uh, you know, you're going against – not only his team, but you're going against a seven-time Hall of Famer, and uh, he's a mad scientist when it comes to, you know, drawing up stuff and putting new stuff in. And you know, you can watch three games, which is what we have typically. When I've played him here in the last eight years, you've got twenty-something games to watch, and and I usually watch quite a few of those. But uh, uh, we've got three three films, uh, you know, this year, and. Um, they scored 93 points at, at, at DePaul, which that's a lot of points. So, you know, we'll, we'll have our hands full. He's got a veteran team, I think eight seniors and two or three more juniors. So he's a, he's a veteran squad. And uh, I think it's his best team that he's had. It's, it's his hardest team, you know, to defend. He's got multiple people on the floor that, that can go for 20 any night. And so you, you really got to be, um, you got to be on your on your toes. Every position does. You know, you you really can't help from anywhere. He's got kids that can shoot it, um, and he's obviously got the the, the big piece inside. And in so we and then his four player is is a monster. And so you're just dealing with some really dominant kids that, and they're all veterans, been in his system for a while. Uh, at three, four, and five, you know. Um, you know, Wells, Jones, and, and and Johnson, those three have played with him now for three years. This is their four. So it creates some issues for us because we'll be putting some people on those kids that have been in, in our system, you know, two months. <laughs> so it's uh, it's just the way it is. But, you know, excited about the opportunity, uh, excited about practice today. Our kids had yesterday off and, um, you know, looking forward to the to the challenge Sunday night. At any time uh, Texas and uh, the Aggies get together, it doesn't matter if we're playing hopscotch or jacks. We're going to keep score. We want to win. So I'm excited to, to have the opportunity. Before we open it up to questions, we'll welcome Joanne Allen Taylor with us. Um, all right, uh, Chris, go ahead and get us started with the first question today. Hey, Vic, um, you've obviously gone up against your alma mater plenty of times and your former boss, but never wearing that Longhorn on your chest and, and in the burnt orange. Do you think your circumstances now being at Texas, the arch rival of A&M, of your alma mater and your, your former boss, your former team, do you think that'll change the circumstances or the emotions for it at all for you? You know, it's always been an emotional game for for us and, and uh, when we were, you know, at state and in, in, in the SEC and, and, uh, um, and now. So uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, we're gonna prepare, I'm gonna prepare just like I have in the past. Um, you know, obviously it, this thing means a lot to a lot of people, but, um, you know, usually we were, we were competing in, in, the, in the other league for championships and, and uh, obviously played each other quite a bit in eight years. And, and so, um, you know, for me, and I know for him, we're going to go about this like we have those other 11. I think we played each other 11 times now. And, um, you know, obviously I know the importance of this game and this rivalry, make no mistake about it, but I'll tell you this, I'm really excited. I'm proud to be wearing burnt orange. Go ahead, Danny. Vic, after the game on Wednesday, you were very critical of your team's effort um, in, in that win. And I'm wondering, when you looked at the film, did those feelings still exist or did you feel differently? And then, um, Joanne, did you feel like your team's effort was lacking um, and that Louisiana, Louisiana Tech played harder than, than y'all on Wednesday? Well, Danny, and just to be clear, I'm, I'm responsible for that, you know, uh, in, in – uh, the buck stops here. So, 
um, you know, any any lack or, or of focus or intensity or how hard we did or didn't play, that, that rests squarely on my shoulders. And, uh, you know, looking at the film, though, <laughs> it didn't change anything. I know we forced 30 turnovers, but really felt like we had lots of multiple possessions where multiple positions were taking plays off. And, um, and that doesn't work in our system. And uh, you know what? The University of Texas deserves better, and it's my job to make sure we give it to them. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll go to work today. Uh, I think if you'd have walked into our locker room the other night, though, uh, I don't think anybody in there was just real excited about, you know. And look, as I said the other night, you always need to be excited about a win. It's hard to win. And we won by 27. So we, uh, and I told them that. I said, hey, I'm going to be excited about the victory. I want you guys to be excited about the victory. But on, on certain nights and most of the rest of the season, you play like that, we won't win. And that's just simply my message. I mean, and I told them we can do this one or two ways. I can just pat you on the back and tell you, hey, we, you know, don't worry about it or we can hold each other accountable and, and go to work and fix it. And so we had yesterday off. I think we were a little tired, Danny, to be honest with you. We had been, we had gone about a week and a half without a day off. And, uh, and so I thought we were a little tired and fatigued. So we gave him yesterday off um, and we'll get back at it today. Yeah, just going off of what coach said, I think it's more about us. It's about what we do and about executing our expectations basically. So, um, I mean, yes, we, it, it looked good, but we have certain expectations as a team and, and if we're not meeting all of them, then we're we're gonna say that um, we could have did better in some areas. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Coach. Uh, going back to the Aggies and just facing facing Coach Blair. What is what is that like facing a coach that you know so well, and you face him obviously a lot of times at Mississippi State, and then from your time at A and M coaching under Coach Blair, what did you learn from him that helped you have so much success at Mississippi State? Well, you know, being on the bench for 15 years side by side, and then now anytime we're in a gym together and we're not, you know, we're not on the same bench, it, it's got a little different feel to it, you know, and uh, and so that's unique in and of itself. Um, you spend 15 years with a, with a guy that's been as successful as he's been, you know, if you don't learn anything, shame on you. So, uh, you know, learned a lot about, you know, there'd be game days where I'd be looking around going, where is he? We need to be watching film. We've got to get ready for this game. And, you know, my responsibility was handling the defense. And, you know, I'd, I'd be like, where is he? Well, then when I got the job at Mississippi State, I realized where he was. Because now I was the head coach and you just have to wear so many hats. And you have so many people pulling on you and tugging on you. So surrounding yourself with good people you know, is, is something that obviously I, I really learned from him. And, um, uh, you know, you can't do it by yourself. And so, uh, man, that list is long and illustrious for the things that, that you learn being around that. But again, he and I, we, we were together, obviously, a long time, won a lot of games together. And um, it's just different. It's all I can say. When we're in the gym now, we're competing against each other. It's just different, and uh, you know, uh, I'm sure he knows, feels like he knows me, like the back of his hand, and you know, I feel like I'm, I've got a pretty good handle on, you know, kind of where they are and what they're going to do. But I'm telling you, he's a mad scientist now. He's got, he'll be, he'll have new stuff in for us uh, that we haven't seen that I won't be able to take this inexperienced team, young team through, and that's where your fundamentals have to really carry you. You know, because they're going to see some stuff they ain't, they have never seen, and certainly that we haven't been able to put them through. And we take a great pride as a staff in our scouting reports of putting our kids through stuff to prepare them for the game. So um, it's it's going to be it's going to be a tremendous challenge, I promise you, for our for our young and experienced team. Go ahead, Jake. Joanne, this will be uh, your first time playing in, in this rivalry game. So I'm just curious uh, what the emotions are for you and your teammates uh, ahead of this weekend. 
Yeah, I'm just excited to prepare, excited to get the chance to play in this game. I'm grateful to play in any game because of COVID this year and, and all that's gone on this year. But I'm definitely uh, grateful and excited to participate in this big rivalry on Sunday. And then one one quick follow up really quick, you know, last year going um, from someone who would come off the bench a lot, kind of being used as a spark plug to this year having a much bigger role now. How have you uh, felt that your game has evolved and now with the added expectation of, of someone who's a huge part of this team? Yeah, just um, more responsibility. Um, more just being ready and being prepared um it's different coming off the bench like you, you just you're put in to add to something or to just give more energy or just not mess something up and now like um being responsible for you know who's on the court with you at all times it's um it i think i've i'm I've, i'm coming into it and i'm just learning just and growing yeah Go ahead, Danny. Joanne, since you're from Houston, I'm sure you have plenty of Aggies in your life. Um, but since these two schools haven't played since you've gotten here and obviously the whole football thing, we don't need to get into it. Do you consider this a rivalry or is this just kind of a, another game for y'all and your rivalries are Oklahoma, Baylor, when you guys get into conference play? Um, I'll say it's a rivalry because uh, so many people speak on it and you want to respect it. So I, I, I'm going to say it's a rivalry I'm, and I'm going to treat it like it's a rivalry <laughs> and we're going to prepare for it like it's a rivalry. So, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. A uh, perfect question before mine for you, Vic. Um, I view this as a rivalry, rivalry still, and I'm sure you do too. What, what, makes this such a unique intense rivalry what kind of a rivalry is it I mean you you were part of the egg bowl and women's basketball and, and you've been a part of this and you you said you know the eyes of Texas as well as anyone what kind of rivalry is this what makes it so special well you know in the game for us also you have to add in this is an SEC big 12 challenge and so we're representing the big 12 conference as well and so that adds you know, that adds a, a big piece for me uh, and hopefully for our kids that we're, we're representing our conference as well. But, I mean, like I said, it wouldn't matter if we were out playing jacks or, you know, hopscotch or anything else. When it comes to A&M in Texas now, there's been a, a, a disagreement, you know, between these two for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, if you're going to do something and keep score, it's important. And uh, I know for us, uh, and for me personally, uh, again, I'm, I have full understanding of it. Uh, I've been, you know, I've, I've watched it in many different sports, been on both sides, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Longhorn. And uh, it's really important to me that, that we go out and represent our state in a, in, in a great way and, and, and do the best, the best that we can in everything that we do, whether it's recruiting, against them or playing a game against them or anything else. Uh, I fully understand the importance of, of this game. And uh, again, it means a lot to a lot of people, you know, and, uh, and so that being said, we're going, we're going to do everything we can to, to uh, prepare. Uh, I think we're going to play them again next year. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good, it's, it's a good guy. I think it's a great game for us. Uh, and, it, and again, it, I think it teaches your kids um, while we try to teach them that, hey, you need to stay on an even keel throughout the season. Don't get too high, don't get too low. I think it, you know, it makes you, brings your awareness and puts your antennas up, you know, a little bit more when you, you're in a game like this. And quite frankly, this is going to make us better. It's going to get us ready for conference. Um, you know, I've said this all the time. We've got 18 rivalry games. You can just add this one and throw in. We've got 19 now. Danny, you're up. Uh, Vic, I just got to ask, uh, I guess, my annual or every press conference question about Lauren's status. Yeah. And to follow up that, regardless of whether or not you guys get her back, your numbers are still small. So I'm wondering if you would consider doing what Karen did last year and finding a walk-on on campus, um, somebody who can give you guys another body or 
trying to find like a semester grad transfer to just to get some more numbers on on your team? Yeah, so just uh, semester grad transfers are not eligible in basketball. Number one, number two, uh, walk-ons are off. They're not part of the equation when it comes to COVID and our situation that we have right now. So both of those are no-goes. Lauren has been denied. And so uh, we are currently, um, there is some legislation that, that has been uh, submitted and there could be a vote as early as, what's today, the fourth, um, within two weeks. But as of right now, Lauren has been denied and um, she will have to redshirt this year. And, um, you know, for that, we're extremely disappointed. As I've said, Danny, our, our people here have just, they've gone to the ends of the earth to try to make this happen. and. It's just crazy, and I, and I probably shouldn't get into it here. I, I need to probably bite my tongue, but it's just crazy and so disappointing. You know, we're, we're supposed to be in the kid business, and when things happen outside of people's control, you'd think that, that, that we could, you know, as adults, we could see that, but this is where we are.